Good afternoon. The first item of business this afternoon is a statement by Paul Peelhouse on new psychoactive substances in Scotland. The Minister will take questions at the end of his statement, so there should be therefore no interventions or interruptions. I call on Paul Peelhouse. Ten minutes, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer, uh, for the opportunity to make a statement today on the matter of new psychoactive substances, substances whose sale is not uh, restricted, but mimic, which mimic, if taken by an individual, the effects of controlled drugs and can be just as harmful and can, in some cases, have fatal consequences. I would like to bring the Chamber up to date with the latest developments and what the Scottish Government is doing in response. The challenges are there for um, my announcements today are not only from a, an enforcement perspective but also in respect of our education efforts. These challenges have been well rehearsed in this chamber and I have been struck by and I am grateful for the consensual nature of the debates on this issue and the goodwill and well informed uh, contributions from members across the chamber. Members will no doubt agree with me that the biggest difficulty and perhaps frustration uh, is that the existing legislative framework enables these substances to remain legal where not knowingly sold for human consumption and thereby not come under the traditional radar of the Misuse of Drugs Act, on which we have relied to control drugs. To this end, I am pleased to announce that the expert review group established by my predecessor has presented its report to me, and this has been published today. It makes a number of key recommendations on how the existing legal framework might be strengthened, not just in the available law, but how the existing legal framework can be made to work better in practice. I am pleased to advise the Chamber that on behalf of the Scottish Government I am minded to accept the recommendations of this report and I wish to record my thanks to all those who directly contributed to this work and those who offered the group insights and expertise from the field. You will appreciate that I have only received the report today but wanted to place this in the public domain to alert you to its findings. You have my commitment that these recommendations will be taken forward with vigour, uh, with priority and in a spirit of collaboration and consensus where this can be found. One of the clear barriers to progress is identifying a shared understanding of the problem. In particular, there is a need for uh, a clear and practical definition of NPS, more evidence of the harms being caused in the immediate, medium and long term, and better data collection and sharing across the range of public services. I heard uh, this directly yesterday from our NPS evidence group, a parallel group of experts that has been brought together by the Scottish Government uh, to review the available evidence on NPS. I am pleased to further announce that this group will be working to develop a definition of NPS that can be used consistently across different sectors. This will assist the courts, uh, forensic experts and those supporting people using NPS. The group will also be reviewing existing systems of data collection and information sharing uh, to improve our knowledge on the extent of NPS use and the associated harms. The particular recording difficulties in respect of accident and emergency departments has been raised in this chamber before. Uh, in addition to the work of the evidence group, I am delighted to uh, announce that the Scottish Government will shortly be commissioning specific research to enable us to better understand the prevalence and harms of NPS use within specific vulnerable subgroups of the population. Stakeholders across Scotland have raised concerns about the use of these substances among vulnerable young, young people, adults with mental health issues and injecting uh, drug users as well. Evidence about the use and harms of NPS within these groups is very limited and there are concerns that the consequences of NPS use among these groups may be particularly severe. Uh, the position is exacerbated by the alarming number of new NPS products appearing on the market each and every year. I recently visited Forfar Police Station in Angus and heard firsthand about the proactive approach taken by local police, trading standard officers, uh, Crown Office Procurator Fiscal Service, community campaigners and others on the proactive multi-agency approach that has been taken in Tayside to tackle NPS. Operation Carinate, as it's known, targeted individuals and premises that sell NPS. This has seen officers utilising common law and trading standards regulations at premises selling NPS. This action has resulted in the closure of premises selling NPS and is an example of good practice of a number of agencies and communities working in partnership to tackle uh, the issue of uh, new psychoactive substances. The partners in Angus indicated this has reduced NPS purchases in their area, but it is early days. Only last month I had the opportunity to close a member's business debate on motion submitted by Alex Johnston uh, on new psych psychoactive substances needs assessment for Tayside and in preparation for that debate and my subsequent visit I was struck by the excellent work being done to tackle the issue these substances are causing uh, to local communities. I have also become very aware of the significant degree of consensus across the political spectrum in the chamber on this challenge and the recognition that there are no easy answers to the questions posed by NPS. As I take forward the range of matters discussed in, my report, uh, in the report, sorry, I am extending an invitation to my colleagues in this chamber from across the parties to join me in a ministerial cross-party group on NPS. 
I will write regarding the details of this to colleagues in the near future. However, in essence, this group will continue to examine the work is under, that is underway uh, to build a shared understanding of the problem, hear from experts in the field and oversee the work as it unfolds. Our education efforts must also continue. Our drugs campaign, Know the Score, continues to offer reliable and non-judgmental advice on drugs and their risks, including new psychoactive substances via our free helpline and website. We also support Cho Choices for Life, delivered in partnership with Police Scotland, uh, a drugs, alcohol and tobacco education programme for school children across Scotland, supported by an information website. Choices for Life will shortly be releasing a video of the dangers of NPS via the GLOW uh, online learning portal uh, to, for schools. And I've also seen firsthand the work of CREW, which is another excellent partnership we have in place. I personally learned a great deal uh, on my uh, visit to, to CREW about the harmful effects of NPS uh, during that visit, and as do uh, the individuals they engage with on a daily basis, including family members of those who are using NPS. I would like to examine the, with the Ministerial Cross Party Group how we might better connect with young people uh, and exploit social media in this regard to educate young people on the risks they face if they do use NPS. I would also like parliamentary colleagues to work with me to examine how we might work with the Scottish Youth Parliament uh, to raise the profile of NPS and to support them to complement the efforts of this chamber. A specific recommendation of the expert review raised the need for a first-class forensic capability that can develop clear standards to support fast and accurate information on NPS for those not just in enforcement but also in critical areas of the health service like accident emergency departments. I'm already in discussion with Forensic Services, Scottish Police Authority on how we uh, can take this forward and this is particularly important given there is evidence from Wales of substances increasing in strength. Again, I would hope that the Ministerial Cross-Party Group can oversee the development of a national centre of excellence. There is a specific recommendation for new legislation to be introduced and I recognise and acknowledge the potential role of the UK Government in securing new arrangements to bring NPS under legal control. The Home Office have been helpful and cooperative in the work of the expert group and I will be meeting my counterpart Lynn Featherston MP to press on her uh, supporting us to bring these substances under legal control in Scotland. In summary, Presiding Officer, the report of the expert group has been published today and I have made a number of immediate announcements on commissioning research on the prevalence and harm uh, that is caused by NPS and beginning work on a definition to guide those in the field as part of an immediate response. I've also invited parliamentary colleagues to join me in considering the work in more detail, including overseeing the increased effort in educating young people and developing a first-class forensic service to strengthen our response. I am encouraged that the expert review concluded that there were a, a range of existing powers that can be used to tackle the sale and supply of NPS and that these can be made more effective. The practical work to progress these operational matters will now begin. And I'm also clear in my commitment to ensure new legislation is brought forward as quickly as possible to put these substances where they belong, subject to criminal proceedings. As has been echoed in this chamber many times, the term legal high has been regarded as a misleading and unhelpful term. I hope that the Chamber will support the findings of the report I published today, making the question of the legality of these substances very clear, identifying the harms they cause and putting where appropriate those who seek to sell them in the knowledge of the harms they cause behind bars rather than behind the shop counters in our high streets. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. The Minister will now take questions on issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we'll move on to the next item of business. If you wish to ask a question of the Minister, it would be extremely helpful if you would press your request to speak button now. And I call Elaine Murray. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Minister for the advanced copy of his statement and for making it available an hour uh, in advance of the statement to the Chamber. Scottish Labour will be pleased to take part in the cross-party working group that he proposes. New psychoactive substances are an issue which governments around the world are struggling to cope with. Biochemical knowledge is now so advanced that if one substance is banned, another with similar effects on the receptors in the brain can be synthesised to replace it. With regards to the forensics, has the Minister examined the approach taken in Wales, where last year the Health Minister allocated funding to the Wadinos project, which provides a mechanism for the collection and testing of unknown and new psychoactive substances or combinations of substances and issues advice on harm reduction? Has he given consideration to, made, to the suggestion made by my colleague Kezia Dugdale in a debate just over a year ago, which seemed to have some uh, acceptance by his predecessor, that universities could work with organisations such as Crew 2000 to set up a social enterprise which would enable drugs which are taken off the streets to be handed over uh, for assessment? 
uh, and can he also clarify what he means by pressing Lynn Featherstone to support you on bringing these substances under legal control in Scotland? Are you arguing for the devolution of these powers, in which case I put it to you uh, that there should be no borders in the fight to control the harm caused by NPS? Minister. Um, well, I thank Elaine Murray, firstly, for her very um, positive contribution in terms of the debates we've had up to now and also her warm words at the beginning about wanting to work with the government in the ministerial cross-party group, and I certainly welcome that myself. Um, on the new substances emerging, uh, she's absolutely correct that uh, we have, I think in the last year, 81 new substances have come on the market, and that shows just how difficult it is for the authorities and uh, those working in the third sector to keep on top of what the impacts are, the harms that there are on individuals, and to advise those individuals the risks that they face and taking them. So that's why testing and the forensics uh, capability is so important, being able to understand when a new product emerges, just what is in it, how potent it is, and potentially to, to wrap that information through the cascade, through uh, the community that are serving uh, drug users to make sure they are prepared for and aware of the risks that they face. Uh, so we are looking closely at what is, is being done in Wales and Weddinos. Um, I can't promise we'll do exactly the same. We'll obviously have to uh, look at that, and that's something we can take forward in the, in the, cro the cross-party group. But um, we certainly are aware of that, and officials from my own department are engaging with our colleagues in Wales about their, their, their progress and being kept informed of that. Uh, the, the point regarding the universities and the social enterprise, I will happily look at that. It predates me, so I will, I will take account of, of what uh, Kezia Dugdale said previously, um, but that's again something we can take forward in the ministerial cross-party group. Um, and as to pressing Lynn Featherstone, we are aware, clearly, we want to work collaboratively with the Home Office and the UK Government on this. I, I respect the point that that has been made by Dr Murray about cross-border issues. Clearly, we face challenges. Um, my colleague, Cabinet Secretary, is meeting uh, in a trilateral with the Irish Government tomorrow, and we'll be discussing these issues with them. So, um, clearly, it doesn't respect boundaries. We need to work together, and we are learning a lot from what the Irish have done themselves. And clearly, the Home Office has produced its own report last October with 31 recommendations of its own. So, we are studying these uh, reports and working closely with our colleagues. And I would just encourage Lynn Featherstone to help us insofar as uh, the UK Government can to, to affect the result we all want to see. Margaret Mitchell. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thanks too to the Minister for advance sight of this statement. Uh, the Minister made reference um, to my colleague Annabel Goldie's question yesterday to the Solicitor General uh, about how many people supplying these substances have been convicted under common law with reckless and culpable conduct. The response was these figures are not available. Clearly, this is a matter of concern, especially as the report identifies that using a charge of reckless and culpable conduct has been successful in securing convictions. So uh, I'm very pleased the Minister um, addressed this data collection issue in his statement. I too confirm that um, the Scottish uh, Conservatives will be happy to take part in the cross-party group. However, there seems to be a, a number of different expert groups looking at this issue without an overarching coordinator. So I wondered if the, the minister could um, perhaps confirm if this is an aspect that has been considered. Minister. I might, you might, the member might expect me to say this, but I hope the Scottish Government is providing some overarching uh, coordination of this activity. But I take the point that there does appear to be different strands, but I can assure uh, Margaret Mitchell they are coordinated and they are complementary rather than cutting across each other. So the, the work that I, I witnessed yesterday at the expert group uh, looking at data issues uh, was, was sitting alongside the, the work that's being done of the expert legal group looking at the legal aspects of it and obviously a focus on data and statistics and information sharing in, in the second group that I met yesterday. So um, they are uh, complementary rather than uh, cutting across each other. I certainly welcome Margaret Mitchell's uh, confirmation that the Scottish Conservatives are, are, are happy to take part in this group and I very much welcome that because I know uh, members such as Margaret Mitchell and Annabelle Goldie have a lot of interest in drug use issues so that's very positive and in terms of the, um, the issue that was raised I know the uh, Solicitor General is looking at how we can improve the availability of Crown Office Procurative Fiscal Service data to ensure we do have as much visibility as possible so that's something that has been taken forward following the question session yesterday. Thank you. We need to finish by three o'clock, so I do need to protect the debate that comes afterwards. I have 11 members who wish to ask a question. If you keep to a question, 
And as the Minister keeps to a brief answer, we'll get through. Graham Day, followed by Alice McInnes. Uh, thank you. The review group report states that there are a number of benefits to the approach taken by the Irish Republic to tackling NPS, citing as an example uh, the, uh, the reduction in the number of head shops from 102 there in 2010 when the legislation was introduced to just 10. But would the, the Minister accept that shutting down such premises, welcome though that would be, isn't in itself going to solve the problem of NPS, not least of all because the addictions they've helped create will presumably be fed via the internet instead? Minister. That, that is an important point. Uh, the Irish uh, have managed to ban all sites using Irish domain names as, a, as another part of their approach. And uh, if we do go forward with proposals to perhaps, uh, as recommended in the report in paragraph 6.9, on the, the merit in considering a new offence to deal with the sale or supply of NPS, that would also potentially ban the sale via the internet. But clearly, again, because internet sales are, are regulated if in effect by the UK government in this context. We need to work closely with the Home Office on such matters and, uh, and other uh, departments at UK government level. So clearly it's another example where coordinated approach between Scottish government and UK government may be uh, helpful in this regard and working with our colleagues <laughs> elsewhere in the European Union to make sure that the internet sales issue is addressed. Alice McInnes, followed by Nigel Dawn. Thank you, President Officer. The Minister noted the need for first-class forensic capability. Forensic services is overspent by 0.29 million and is facing a further 0.214 million unallocated cost reductions before the end of the year. And this SPA has admitted this is beginning to put pressure on its finite resources. Excuse me. Given the importance of tackling the menace of NPS, can the Minister advise what additional funds will be available to for forensic services to build that first-class um, capability? Minister. Well, clearly, I, I recognise that, um, like all parts of the public services, we are under uh, pressure at the moment uh, due to uh, f funding constraints. But we will work closely with um, Police Scotland and indeed the forensic services to identify what is possible within existing resources and, and where necessary, if there are additional resource requirements, we will take those on board. But um, it's, it's early days. The, the report has just been produced. Uh, we are signalling that we accept the, the point that's been made by the expert legal group and look forward to working out the detail. And that's clearly something we can discuss within the group that I've suggested today. Nigel Dawn, followed by Jenny Mara. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm very grateful to the, member, uh, to the Minister, of course, for his statement. And I recognise that he's doing lots of things about the physical supply within, within the country. If I could just extend Graham Day's point, I'm wondering what the Minister feels he can do, presumably with the Home Office, to deal with what's going to happen, which is an internet sale and supply. And that will only be worked out, of course, through international uh, discussion. Minister. Um, well, it's, um, it's early days, but I appreciate that uh, European Justice Council, the, the issue of NPS use has been discussed in the past. I know it is on potentially an agenda item that's coming up in the near future. Uh, that may be a forum whereby we can engage with other governments to discuss um, a, a coordinated approach across the European Union to tackling the problem of internet sales. Um, there are some challenges in terms of internet sales for those who wish to use that route. Uh, I heard in Angus that there's predominantly young unemployed males that are using NPS and therefore they may not have access to credit cards or other means to actually use internet sales, but clearly there's also a risk that somebody could do so and then sell on to those individuals uh, separately. So clearly the, we need to have a, a sophisticated approach to this. There is no single silver bullet, and that's why it's useful, I think, to, to take on board the, the ideas of all other uh, parties in the, in the chamber and work together to try and come up with a coordinated solution. Jenny Mara, followed by Kevin Stewart. The Minister will know how important this is to the communities I represent in Dundee and Angus, where there have been fatalities as a result of legal highs. Scottish Labour called this week for the collection of data, uh, the amount of people pre presenting themselves to A&E having take taken legal highs. Now, the Minister said today that he would be reviewing existing systems of data collection, but he did not give a com specific commitment to collection. Can he please tell me what timeline he aspires to for the collection of this data? Minister. I will certainly rec recognise the issue that data collection and, and looking at new means of collecting data is obviously something that uh, we are interested in. The group yesterday that I met uh, in Edinburgh were, uh, were looking at that very issue. What we could use existing data, but obviously what other forms of data we could deploy, whether there are um, existing uh, information systems that could be, if adapted, could adapt in such a way as they could capture more useful information on uh, the granularity of, of drug misuse and therefore within that NPS use. So I can give the member an assurance that is something we are looking at. Uh, clearly, um, it's, it's important to, to take an evidence-based approach to policy development at any point in time. And uh, we do lack, uh, at the moment, the, a comprehensive picture and there are some differences of opinion emerging that, that perhaps the statutory sector see a different message emerging in terms of use of inter, uh, intravenous drug use uh, deployment. 
and in the uh, third sector, people seeing uh, an increasingly um, a new group of people using intravenous um, drug misuse. So uh, we have um, some conflicts in data and we need to bring them together and understand and get a comprehensive picture so we know where the problems are, the prevalence rates and indeed the particular drugs that are being used. Kevin Stewart, followed by Dr Richard Simpson. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The uh, Local Government Committee is currently looking at the Air Weapons and Licensing Bill, and there's a, a sense of frustration amongst folk in Aberdeen that there's a lack of licensing provision uh, for shops specialising in the sale of psychoactive substances uh, and drug paraphernalia. Is there a practical way that we can bring these kind of shops into the licensing regime to give folks peace of mind? Minister. Well, certainly the um, expert legal group did look at alternative models in places like New Zealand where licensing has been taken. Uh, while there are some strengths to that approach, there are also concerns uh, about it as well. And it wasn't deemed to be, uh, in the words of the expert legal group, the, the, the most appropriate solution in this case. But I recognise the point that Kevin Stewart makes about the concern among communities about the prevalence of head shops in, in their high streets. And that's why it was so positive, the action that was taken in Angus, to tackle this issue uh, through trading standards, through Police Scotland and the local council working together together to identify how they could use common law and careless and reckless behaviour to, to identify where uh, there was irresponsible sale of NPS, uh, putting at risk uh, young people and, and others in the community. So successful action has been taken in that community, uh, led by uh, community groups uh, forcing the issue home and, and, and putting their own pressure on those suppliers, and it has had the benefit of shutting down those shops. Dr Richard Simpson, followed by Alex Johnson. Uh, Minister, there is considerable avoidance of prosecution by labelling products as not being for human use and at the same time not saying what effects could occur if it was used by a human. Can I ask him if he'd hold early discussions with the New Foods Scotland uh, Agency to look at those products which, whilst labelled for animal use, are clearly being sold with the intention of human use to see if we can't get warnings to be extended uh, so that at least people are being protected? Minister. Um, that's um, that's a, a useful point that, that, that uh, Dr Simpson has made. Certainly, I agree with him. There is great concern that products, the, the whole perception of these products as being legal highs is entirely misplaced. They are legal if they are not being used for human consumption. They are clearly very dangerous in many cases if they are used for human consumption. And we know some of the substances which mimic existing illicit drugs may be eight uh, or more times as powerful as the, uh, the, the equivalent product. So people will be taking maybe a similar quantity and then completely taken by the, the strength of the, the dose they take and that may cause fatal consequences. So we all have an interest to make sure that labelling is clear to make sure people do not consume them uh, at all and uh, certainly take forward the point that Dr Simpson uh, suggests and, and we'll discuss that within the ministerial cross-party group. Alex Johnson followed by Mark MacDonald. I thank the Minister for taking broad action across a broad front after being in receipt of this report. Uh, can I also suggest that the, we commend the action that was taken by Police Scotland in Angus where the common law and trading standards were used in combination in order to facilitate a, a raid on such a shop. Uh, I wonder if the Minister could tell me if any other uh, sections of the police force across Scotland have taken similar action and whether this is likely to become policy, both Police Scotland and future. Minister. Well, I think um, I am aware that in South Ayrshire a appro similar approach was taken some years before, but um, I think it would be fair to say that Angus has, uh, has, has, has demonstrated a, a much more you know, coordinated and wide-scale approach to tackling the problem at a community level, and there has obviously been a strong community uh, impetus behind that as well. So perhaps it is more recent and it is more um, uh, uh, in, in the light of emerging trends, if you like, in higher incidence of NPS use and the higher availability of products. So in the case of Angus, it is certainly very much welcome. What, they, what has been done there is certainly something we are very interested in. But in order to be able to use careless and reckless in terms of the common law, uh, we need to be able to demonstrate harms. And so that is why it is so important to have the forensic capability and the, the, the coordination with our health professionals to understand the, the physical, emotional, psychological impacts of these substances on individuals uh, and to be able to demonstrate harms. It makes it much more easy to enforce once we have got a clear idea of the harms of each product. Mark MacDonald, followed by Rhoda Grant. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I am grateful to the Minister for his statement and also for the 
focus that is being placed on education uh, within the action the government is taking forward. However, can I ask, beyond the education targeted at children and young people, if he will examine the expansion of that to include the adult population, given the important role that parents and community leaders will play in terms of ensuring that the strong messages that the government wishes to convey are put across, but also in terms of spot, being able to spot the signs of NPS use in young people who they are responsible for, either as parents or perhaps as youth leaders. Minister. I think those are extremely important points that, that Mark Macdonald makes. The, um, uh, the work that CREW do in Edinburgh uh, is a good example. They are a national organisation, they are nationally commissioned, and they can provide support across the country. But CREW work with uh, parents, so often parents will come in for confidential advice about the substances they know their children may or may not be taking and, and be able to get advice. They are aware of the risks themselves and be able to obviously support their children, hopefully coming off. Uh, these substances, but uh, also equally important for adult users, we are seeing increasing incidents of um, experienced drug users perhaps diverting into using NPS. They are sometimes cheaper than the, the equivalent and uh, more freely available, and therefore there is a danger um, that they are we're getting back into a culture of people using intravenous um, methods of, of deploying uh, drugs and therefore putting themselves at risk of blood-borne diseases, uh, uh, ulcers and even amputation risks. Uh, so there are, there are serious consequences associated with uh, injecting drugs uh, intravenously and therefore uh, we need to make sure that people are equipped with the knowledge to keep them safe. Uh, if they are going to use these substances, we need to do the absolute maximum we can to prevent them putting themselves at risk. Rhoda Grant, followed by Roderick Campbell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I ask what assistance can be given to local authorities with regard to licensing premises that sell NPS and whether lessons can be learned from the approach taken by the local authority down in Lincoln to stop these outlets opening on our high streets? So, certainly on the latter point, we are um, going to take an interest in what's happening in Lincoln. Um, it's a measure that uh, isn't directly comparable in Scotland, but we are going to study what, what the implications are of that. It will deal with activity that's out in the Public, public space, but wouldn't necessarily prevent sale of, of the substances as we understand it. So uh, it will only have a limited impact. But in terms of licensing, I recognise the important role of local authorities, obviously um, in terms of uh, discharging their functions in planning, licensing, and the role of trading standards are clearly important in, uh, players in this. And they've worked very constructively in Angus Council and South Ayrshire Council to uh, help tackle the problem at a local level. We want to make sure all local authorities are aware of what's possible, what the toolkits are available to them. That's one of the key uh, recommendations in the report, developing a toolkit for trading standards officers to know what the powers they have are and how they can deploy them most effectively, learning from good examples in Angus and South Ayrshire. So the more we can do on that to help local authorities to tackle problems at a local level, the better. But I certainly welcome Rhoda Grant's comments and, and are keen to, to help ensure that happens. Roderick Campbell and finally John Finn. Um, how would the Minister evaluate the success of the Know the Score uh, helpline and website to date? Minister. Um, certainly, the, the, the website has been uh, effective in, in that it has reached uh, a large number of individuals. Know the Score um, provides, obviously, a, a good source of information which is, um, it can be read at time and leisure of the individual. It doesn't uh, deal with any issues to do with anonymity. They can read it in their own time, in their own space, and, and learn about the, the challenges. But we have um, had some evidence of um, using uh, Facebook, for example, to promote the use of Know the Score. And I know that the campaign that was launched last year managed to uh, d d generate uh, 11,000 clicks or 5,000 additional people visiting the website over, over a single month that the adverts ran. So we can do more to make sure people are aware of where the information is, uh, where they can access it. And I know agencies like CREW and the, and the local ADPs make sure that local residents are aware of Know the Score and it is a valuable resource for them. But it's only one part of the picture and using information on the internet through GLOW to, to educate children is also a very important part of, of what we propose to do. John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, Minister, the misuse of drugs legislation represents 45 years of failure in many people's eyes, myself included. Uh, we must engage in terms of people and understand. In the meantime, that is the term legal highs. I commend the work of crew as you do. Would you agree with me to use education as the primary vehicle for addressing the concerns that we all have? Minister. I do think that is um, that's probably true. Uh, we, we have a situation where we have to deal with immediate impacts on individuals, but in the longer term, because of the number of these products that are coming to the market, we need to get people educated, young people particularly, educate that the risks they face. We know many people attending clubs are being presented with NPS as a, as a, as a uh, so-called soft option or legal, legal high and maybe not aware of that they are, that doesn't apply in any way, shape or form that they are properly regulated, that they are safe. Um, the misleading aspect of them being properly professionally packaged also leads 
people into thinking that they are perhaps safer than they are. In, in truth, when people take them, they can't be guaranteed they'll get the same experience with one packet they will get with another. And we have found that they have sometimes been cross-cut with illicit drugs as well. So they may be taking something which is extremely powerful and may do them uh, enormous damage. So we have to educate people as to the risks, um, uh, make sure that they are, are not going into uh, a situation where they may be using uh, an NPS product uh, without uh, a good grounding in knowledge as to what the risks they face and perhaps to deter them from doing so. Thank you. That ends uh, the ministerial statement. Can I thank the minister and members? Uh, we can do it when we try to keep it brief. Uh, we've managed to get through all of it. We now move to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion number 12423 in the name of Marco Berge in on the Commission on Local Tax Reform. Members who wish to take part in the debate should press the request to speak button now. And I call Marco Berger to speak to me.